But of course, this doesn't surprise me because I don't think LDL has anything to do with heart disease. I've never believed this. And I know that puts me in a minority of the world because everyone else goes, oh, it does cause it. I'm going, no, it doesn't. I had a, a man recently, he was two years ago, he's from the States. No, three years ago. Time flies when you're having fun. He um, had an LDL level of 19, all right, which is whatever that is. The average being three, it's like seven, six, seven times as high. Right? And he told me, I have no evidence of any heart disease. He's 72. All right? They've scanned me. They've looked at me in every possible way. I have no um, damage to my arteries, no thickenings, no atherosclerosis. It doesn't exist, all right? And he knew this because he had, well, this is called familiar hypercholesterolemia, which would actually be called familiar hyper ldl -emia. But that's even more of a mouthful. Anyway, he, uh, because of this, he was put on statins when they first came along, but he couldn't tolerate them. And they tried other things and he couldn't tolerate that. So his LDL has always been way up here. And his doctors have been sort of studying him and going, we must get your LDL level down. And sort of 25 years later, there is no evidence of heart disease whatsoever. Well, I thought, well, people do write to me quite a lot. And I think, well, maybe. And then he turned up in the New England Journal of Medicine as a case history, this guy, right? And everything was as he said, all right? And and the evidence, the explanation for the authors was he must be protected against his LDL in some other way, right? So when you get an absolute, you know, th th there's this thing of called the black swan. I don't know, you know, black swan is started with Karl Popper, who I like, but not really does. But anyway, he said, if your hypothesis is that all swans are white, finding more and more white swans has very, very little impact on your hypothesis. Once you find one black swan, your hypothesis is dead, right? Now, I find black swan after black swan. I find people like this man was 19. People write to me all the time saying, my cholesterol, my LDL is 12, which is four times. I have no heart disease. I'm 90 years old, all right? Um, and when you start looking at the whole thing of this is to an extent what's kept the hypothesis going for so long is familial hypercholesterolemia, which basically means a very high LDL level. I mean, very high. Uh, so we're talking sort of three, four, five, six, seven times as high as, as normal, right? And all the medical literature will say, oh, yep, these people die very young of heart disease, and the rate of heart disease in young people is 400% higher than it is in the surrounding population. Now, uh, this is one of these weird areas where I say, well, that's true, but it doesn't actually mean anything, all right? Well, the first thing is when they say the rate of heart disease is four times as high in the 30 to 39-year-olds, you go, well, what's the average rate of heart disease in that population? And it's virtually zero. And in the UK, they have a thing where they, they monitor people with familiar hypercholesterolemia, and they found, yes, there was a 400% increase in, in death rate in that population. But in that population, that meant four people. Four people. That was it. And that is, is considered statistically significant. But when you look at overall life expectancy, when you look at familiar hypercholesterolemia, and you say, yeah, but what happens to people throughout their lives with familiar hypercholesterolemia? The answer is they live slightly longer than everybody else. On average, they live longer than everybody else. And uh, now people go, oh, that can't be true. I go, that is true. And I have the papers. I have the studies. I can. There's a huge study that's been going in Norway for years and years and years. And in fact, most interestingly, uh, the population aged between 60 to 80, which is where a lot of heart attacks and deaths happen with heart disease. If you have familiar hypercholesterolemia, you are 40% less likely to die of a heart attack. So I said, well, this is, that'd be like saying to someone, if you smoke when you're 40, you'll die of lung cancer. But if you smoke when you're 70, you're much less likely to die of lung cancer. By the way, smoking causes lung cancer. You go, well, that's just rubbish, isn't it? That's just not, you're talking nonsense. How can this thing be a risk factor when you're one age and stops being a risk factor when you're another age? The answer is, and I've written papers on this with other authors, that some people with familiar hypercholesterolemia have another problem, a genetically linked problem. There is a few of these people, and these are the people that have the heart disease. It's got nothing whatsoever to do with the LDL. It's like looking at people with red hair and saying that they die more of heart disease. And you'll go, 
well, that's fine, but the red hair is not causing the heart disease. It's something else. And what is something else is actually that people with red hair are more likely to have a Neanderthal genetic um, DNA incorporated into them. And these people are more likely to get heart disease. So we're looking at we're looking at LDL and deciding it's causal. We're, and we're just sort of saying, well, that's causal because we know it's causal. And then it's like, no, it's not. So the whole concept of LDL being damaging is wrong. So therefore, whatever anyone says about, oh, your LDL goes up or your LDL goes down. Remember that study I talked about with Ansel Keys? Their LDL went down, their heart disease rate went up in a kind of linear effect. In this Framingham study, the more your LDL fell, the more your heart disease went up. And if you look at elderly people, that becomes more extreme. So people over 70-ish, I don't like calling them elderly anymore as that age is approaching me fast, is that the lower your cholesterol level, LDL level is, the more likely you are to die. And it's quite a dramatic difference. And so we have people aged of 70 who are more at risk of heart disease, yes, because they're older, and they're being told you must get your LDL level down. I'm going, but, but you know, look at the, look at the evidence, please. Just look at it. You 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 know when people just they just then withdraw in and say, "Oh, I'm not discussing this with you because you you're just an idiot or something like that." And I, I said, "Hold on, that paper was published in the BMJ. You know, this is this this was not the you know 14 times the, we did this research. We looked at all the evidence, and from all the evidence that we can find, LDL has no effect whatsoever on the risk of heart disease. It might be it's got an inverse risk. In other words." The lower your LDL level is, the more likely you are to die. And that, that sounds an extraordinary thing to say, but that is what the evidence says. That is what the studies say. I mean, I can't, I'm, I can't I'm going to hold them up in front of you here on a, in front of my front of my camera. This one, this one, and 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 this one. It's just, you know, so where's the evidence the other way around? I mean, I, I as you know, I got sued, well, I got attacked by a major newspaper in the UK for saying such things. And we then sued them for libel and won because once we went to court, right, and the evidence was presented to someone, a judge who doesn't really actually know anything about this area, it was like, well, yeah, well, yeah, these people seem completely reasonable and what they seem to be saying is completely right. What's your problem? But the problem is, of course, that the, the medical profession, if it can be called as a single thing, is absolutely wedded to this idea. And so uh, is almost everybody else. And then so everyone goes, well, they can't all be wrong, can they? Well, 